All right, Brutal Doom version 21 open beta has launched today, and I thought I would make the most shameless video ever and actually put out a blind LP of a few levels of Doom using this particular gameplay enhancement wad. Now, right off the bat, we have the Brutal Doom options, and there's a lot of elements that Brutal Doom changes. We have some new enemies, we've got uh, something, some level changes, uh, which is a really cool level enhancement system. And also, one thing that uh, some of you might find strange, we've got, we've got credits here. We've got credits. We've got all kinds of things like that, ladies and gentlemen. Although, I had thought that uh, Sergeant Mark IV didn't actually credit anyone. That was one of the more persistent rumors. Uh, next, we, of course, have the various game modes. Rifle Start, Pistol Start, Purist, Tactical Mode, and Random. I do not know what Tactical Mode is. I went into the game to see if it actually would work, and it did, using the Rifle Start. We, of course, have all the various episodes and Brutal Deathmatch, because it's actually, when you download it off of ModDB, comes with Xandronum. And Xandronum, I haven't used it in years, ladies and gentlemen, in years. I went to uh, GZ Doom. Also, one of the things you can do is you can add a HUD. You no longer have to get the Ultimate Violence... Ultra Violence HUD? I can't remember what it's called. I haven't... I haven't I have not played any, of Do any Doom in a long time, to be perfectly honest. Not that I got sick of it, it's just I was playing other games. What is the name of that visor? UDV visor. I know that. I forget what UDV stands for, but whatever! This visor comes directly with Brutal Doom, meaning you don't have to uh, download a separate one. And it looks more or less the same as that particular visor, so I don't really care. It's actually a little cooler in some respects, just because we have the uh, Corporal Flynn Taggart. I'm surprised people actually remember that. You know, because I, for the longest time, I thought I was the only one who actually read the Brutal Doom novel. Not the Brutal... Yeah, the Brutal Doom novelization. I can't wait for that. It basically just changes some dialogue around to where, to where it actually mimics, mimics that of the Doom comic. But the Doom novelization, I thought I was the only one who had actually read that gutty thing. And I liked it quite a bit, I should say. I found it to be a great deal of fun. And the characters were pretty cool. Although, I would love to know which book I read that that the uh, character Flynn Taggart actually uh, mimics. Because there is a book written from the first person perspective. I can't remember what it's called. It's set during the Revolutionary War. And I swear, Flynn Taggart sounds exactly like that guy. I just can't remember. I, I just have never been able to remember it after all these years. But I swear it's true. I swear it's true. I read it in college. Very good book. Can't remember the name. Also, of course, we have the pistol. The pistol makes its comeback here. Uh, you know, I never really liked this pistol model, to be perfectly honest. And apparently if I click... Oh, that's a punch. Okay. I, I did not know what the alt fire for this was. I never really liked the pistol model in the original Doom. Just never really cared for it altogether that much. It just looks weird. It looks it looks too big and chunky. The sound effects have changed yet again, and the assault rifle sounds really, really good. Uh, I mean, it just sounds a lot more throaty than it once did, which I really, really like. The assault rifle used to sound kind of kind of chintzy. Then again, you know, real rifles don't have that much of a roaring... Well, unless it's like a 308, but uh, like an AR doesn't sound quite like that. Although, although with uh, a, a muzzle brake, like an A2 birdcage, goddamn muzzle brakes. Whenever you go to the range and somebody's got an AR, you know, you do not want to be right next to them. And, you, and invariably, I end up right next to them. Because, man, I like all the windows, too. It's like, you would, it's just a simple little, uh, it's a simple little change, but it's cool. This is not, these levels haven't been changed altogether that much compared to, uh, some of the other level enhancement ones. Yeah, you go to the range, and somebody's got something with a muzzle brake. Well, I, 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 I shouldn't, I shouldn't complain too much because some of my guns have, uh, muzzle brakes on them as well. But, goddammit, is that really give you a headache. Especially if someone's got a 308. Those 308 ARs are the worst when it comes to that. I mean, really. Just every time they shoot, blam, blam, ugh. The 223 isn't much better. You'd think that uh, this rifle here... Wait, does it have a muzzle brake? I think it does. I think it might have a muzzle brake. Ooh, I do like this new uh, chain gun, though. It just looks... These are... Massive, engorged phalli of death. Also, 
I like how the pistol kind of shrinks when you go to reload it, because that back end just seems too big to make any sense. Now, the shotgun here it looks okay. It looks very much like the Project Brutality shotgun. My only problem with that, though, also new anime. I think that was a new animation. Still a nice animation regardless if it's new or not. This looks very much like the Project Brutality shotgun. The only problem I have with uh, some of these new shotgun models is they look a little too thick. I remember AVP2 had that problem. That fucking shotgun in that was absolutely massive. When in all reality, shotguns aren't quite that thick. <laughs> Especially even a 12 gauge isn't that isn't going to be that big. I like the earlier uh, Project, not Project Brutality, uh, earlier Brutal Doom shotguns that actually look a little more reasonable. But once again, this is Doom. It's supposed to be, you know, a little more over the top than not. Now, one thing that's interesting, though, is the fact that in the uh, Doom novelization, Flynn Taggart did not have an assault rifle of any description. He didn't have, like, some sort of space M forgery. Instead, what he had was what was called the Sig Cow, which I honestly forget what that is called now. I can't remember it for the life of me. But I do remember it was a 10 millimeter. Oh, yeah, because that was. I don't think the guys who wrote the book really knew anything about guns when they wrote that. Because they said it was a semi automatic 10 millimeter carbine. For whatever reason, like in the late 80s, early 90s, the 10 millimeter, man, everybody loved the 10 millimeter. And Maps of Chaos, that's the map I was trying to think of. I'm actually so used to playing Maps of Chaos now that I really expect, you know, a lot of these monster closets to open up and they're not. I would play it with, like, Maps of Chaos, but right now I want to see what level changes the uh, mod does to just base on Modified Doom. And I'm, not, I'm not seeing that many changes, but what changes there are is really cool, though. I mean, if all you wanted to do was just get the mod pop in Doom and play it, this is a good option. That way you don't have to try to figure out, okay, what mod works with what. And the shotgun holds 10 rounds now. Extended capacity assault magazine tube. Although in all reality, most shotguns will hold just about maybe uh, 8. And most just hold 6. But 10 is cool. I'm not complaining. That was one of my biggest problems with the shoddy, is it just didn't hold enough ammo. That will certainly alleviate that. This feels so easy to me, though, now. After having played the shit out of Maps of Chaos. Because Maps of Chaos is probably one of the best map packs there ever was, just in terms of enemy placement and enemy count. Definitely do, does have a lot of new sounds. The, the movement system feels a little different as well, actually. I kind of like how, they, how the movement system feels now. Now, I'm not really sure how long I'm going to play it, uh, just because I don't think we'll be able to go through all the changes. And I'll say, and I'll, I'm not going to make a, a full video on uh, V21 until the actual one is released. Uh, but for what what's here is here is it does improve. It actually feels, honestly, honestly, this feels a lot like Project Brutality. Uh, it, it feels like Brutal Doom is getting closer to uh, the Project Brutality standard. I still think I like Project Brutality more still. But it does feel like it's getting to that sound. I really do like the sound for this assault rifle, though. I really, really, really do. It doesn't sound like a 10 millimeter, but then again, it would make no sense to issue... Honestly, in the in the future of 1997, which I'm assuming is when Doom Do the original Doom takes place, uh, it, I guess it would make sense that maybe the 10 millimeter is still competitive. The 10 millimeter has made a comeback, don't get me wrong, but like the whole idea of issuing entire squads with submachine guns in the modern era. The sad part about submachine guns like the MP5 and, and, and the UMP is just the fact that it's outmoded. It, it's old it's old it's it's old technology, I hate to admit it. Cause I cause even I like it, you know, I like those kind of guns, but real realistically though, you, you would not want that. You know, with the advent of the M4, which is the 14 inch barrel version of the uh, AR fifteen well not the AR fifteen. It's a four well, it, it's based on that anyway. The 14-inch barreled version of AR, I mean, you get all the advantages of a rifle without any of the disadvantages of a submachine gun. So yeah, I think we'll finish this level, and then we will move on to uh, some of the other episodes in Doom and see what little changes are there in the first couple levels. But the, the changes are not too bad, so like, if you are more of a Doom purist than I am, uh, then you might be less offended. 
a lot of the uh, pickups look a lot like the free doom pickups. Oh yeah, we also got a flashlight here. That who we got? We got dual wielding. I love I love me some dual wielding in games. You know, I, oh, I like the flashlight. It doesn't lag the game out. Like, uh, the ultimate... Ultimate Doom Visor! There we go! Ultimate Doom Visor! Uh, like the Ultimate Doom Visor, and it actually... Looks a lot more... It looks a lot more natural. It's not just a little spot of light. It actually has... Uh... Some curvature on, uh... Different surfaces. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Sergeant Mark IV has done an amazing job... Just updating Doom. Wow, that was kind of... These pistols wreck everything. All these act more like submachine guns. Yeah, the submachine guns are just so outmoded. I mean, it's a cool... It's They're cool guns, don't get me wrong, but... You can do everything that a submachine gun can do with an M4. So, it's just like, you wouldn't really need it. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, uh, let me know how foolish I am in the comments. Alright, let's see. Do we have grenades? Yes, we do! We got grenades! Where's the grenade count? I'm not seeing it on the HUD here. But whatever. I do. Uh, I still say the grenades in Brutal Doom are better than the ones in Project Brutality. They just do so much more damage. So much more. Ooh, that's a new change. The uh, the fire that the imp shoot out looks a lot cooler. I will admit. And see that little green thing. That I keep expecting monsters to jump out of there. They're not. All right. So already the changes are subtle but nice. I'm actually getting back into Doom because I've played. Uh, Doom in a little while. Okay, let's check out Purist on Inferno. Why? Because I because Shores of Hell is still my favorite. Okay, this one we're not gonna do this for very long if it's what I think it is. I'm assuming this is just base classic. No, it's not. Uh, the sound effects are different and the animations are a little different. The animation on the pistol looks a little better, and the, there's still animations for all this stuff, but. Uh, it's still gonna be just base Doom, so if you are a purist, well, here's your option while still having a few minor updates. Okay, let's see what tactical mode is on the old Shores of Hell, which is still my favorite of the... Well, I'm the most astou- Oh, this is what that's gonna be. Okay, I see. Uh, I played Brutal Doom Black Edition, which I didn't really like that much just because it kind of took the arcade feel out of it. Oh, that guy's make it, made an appearance again, the guy with the fucking uh, axe. Okay, cause see, it's just like, you, you're going too slow, but that's where you have the uh, uh, sprint. You know, it just doesn't feel right. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, crap, we got all kinds of stuff there. Uh, let's see, what is that? Oh, I guess it's like things you can, Oh, there's, there's pickups now, okay. So once again, a lot like uh, Project Brutality. Let's see, I'm not... This is actually a little better than uh, Brutal Doom, but uh, yeah, Brutal Doom Black Edition. It's not taking as much damage, but you still have that same old issue where you don't have enough ammo, which really annoys me. And that always annoys me in first-person shooters where they don't give you enough ammo, so you're really watching every shot. But for a game like this, it does. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work for me at the very least. Okay, we can jump. Crouch. And there's that little bit of a delay between sprinting and not. Okay, so I don't think I'm ever gonna like the tactical mode uh, in this particular in, in Doom at the very least. If I go back in here, and keycard has that nice little red glowy thing, but still nothing that amazing. Okay, let's give all and let's see what kind of weapons we have. Actually, let's go to pistol start on the shores of hell because I don't want to be in tactical mode. I like being able to move more. The, the, the movement speed is slower, though. In, in, in regular Brutal Doom mode, the movement speed does feel a little slower than uh, previous version. I, it, it does feel a lot slower. Okay, let's give all, and let's see what we got here. We've got a submachine gun out of Project Brutality. This doesn't look like the Project Brutality submachine gun. Oh, I guess it's supposed to be some sort of a uh, Thompson submachine gun sort of thing. I'm not seeing altogether that many changes for this. I'm still I'm just so used to map the chaos. It just feels it just looks wrong. Okay, I do like this submachine gun a little more than the Project Brutality uh, submachine gun. I like the sound effects for it a little bit better. Like a lot better. It's, it's, it's a little more throatier. Let's see, and we can aim. 
with it as well. Okay, let's see. We got the double barrel shotgun. It's one of those with exposed hammers. This is this does look like the Project Brutality shotgun. I wonder. I haven't followed the uh, news, but I do wonder if the Project Brutality guys and Sergeant Mark have teamed up or not. Probably not. And this works just like you would expect from a double barrel shotgun. It vaporizes just about everything. Let's see, uh, we got my shots three. So we just got. Oh, I guess it must be a new shotgun. Oh, this is the auto shotgun. Also, something from Project Brutality. Looks like this is supposed to be a, a A12. I think I prefer the Project Brutality auto shotgun, both in terms of sound and looks as well. However, however, there's a comma there. However, I think I like this one a little bit better for one minute. I keep thinking something's going to pop up there, but it isn't, because this is not the Maps of Chaos. Yeah, this, I, don't see, I don't see that many changes in this. I guess most of the changes would have been in the uh, first episode anyway. With more with changes for the for the later episodes to come later. Okay, let's pop in here. But the, the thing I like about this shotgun a little more is the fact that it's much faster re to reload. It's still slow enough that it's not entirely a cheap item, but it's not as annoying as with the... Uh, this is actually one of my favorite levels in all of Doom right here. I don't know what it is about the boxes, but I like, my, I like me some boxes. I like my boxes. But the problem with uh, the Project Brutality auto shot is until you find the upgrade for it, you're just stuck loading the shells singly. And this is kind of annoying. It can easily get you killed. Okay, so we got, we've got already seen that. We got the rifle. Ooh, we got a new machine gun. That's sort of a squad automatic weapon thing going on here. Which is kind of cool. And you don't have to reload it, it would seem. So, we got a saw. I'm, the thing is, like, it almost seems... It almost seems like this is a little little pointless, just because it's like, you got a saw. But won't the, I, guess, I guess since this shoots le not as fast as the... Uh, chain gun, it gives you an option, like a mid-range option, which is cool, because on certain quads, I don't think you'd ever really need it in base, you know, like Vanilla Doom, which is what we're playing right here. But the base, yeah, but the base kind of Vanilla Doom that we're playing here, you wouldn't really need something that specific, but there are some of the harder wads where you do need some sort of mid-range thing, so you don't blow through all your ammo in one go. Okay, so we got the base rocket launcher, the old rocket launcher. Looks like it's actually changed a little bit. I, I always like the updated rocket launcher just because the other rocket launcher just was a little too un the, the original one. This was a little too it wasn't detailed enough for my taste. Yeah, it works just like you'd expect the rocket launcher to work. We have another one. Oh, we got the grenade launcher. But this has been in here for a while. I think this is actually the original uh, skull tag grenade launcher. Okay. Plasma Rifle has, is very different. This is like the original Elephant Trunk uh, Plasma Rifle. I still like it though, but I prefer the new one to this one though. The Elephant Trunk one just, it's kind of aged a bit. But if I had to play a game with the Elephant Trunk one, this is probably the best form of it. Let's see, let's see, six. Now I'm not sure if this was, now this is sort of a, an update of the original Skull Tag. Railgun. Let's just keep moving. I just can't help but go through there while jumping. Alright, so... Yeah, it's still the same way. You can't actually... Oh, you can zoom in with it. Where it gives you a little, uh... Night vision kind of thing. Okay, let's see. Not any more on that. Now, this doesn't have quite the, uh, weapon variety that Project Brutality does. And, of course, BFG still works like the BFG. I think this might have been... I think this... My oh, this is it works exactly like I remember it does. I think that was actually a uh, Project Brutality weapon as well. But I've seen it in other mods. The weird little thing. Of course, we still have the uh, flamethrower, which is cool. I'm not sure if that was Project Brutality too. Actually, got the uh, rocket. We got grenade. Let's see what we got here. Okay, still got that. And then we got the uh, skull tag BFG kind of BFG machine. No, I don't want the bloody... Actually, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same old... Uh... I think like you can do combos now, but I would not have any clue how to pull them off. The only problem with Berserk, especially with uh, Project Vitality, is you're just taking too much damage. Look at that. I'm already back down to 45 health. But overall, I'm pretty much impressed with uh, some of the minor changes. 
I think we'll see more changes as time goes on. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be able to, in, in just the few minutes that I'm playing this, to be able to get to some of the cool stuff, and I'm not even sure if it's in the game. Like the uh, tank that you're supposed to be able to get, at least according to the trailer. Now, this has been in a lot of mods that I have seen. Okay, so this doesn't actually uh, take away from your health. There's one mod that does. And you can rescue guys still. Where it takes away from your health and shoots out like ghosts from uh, uh, Hexen. Sound effect is really cool. I kind of like the whole demon flamethrower thing, although I still like the original one that I keep thinking of. Because it actually uses the sound effect of BJ falling in uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yes, I am that well versed with these fucking games that I know these sound effects by heart. Alright, let's kill that guy. Alright, so, overall, I can... Well, I'm done. Overall, I can say that I am impressed so far. Uh, just with this open beta here. Uh, it runs really, runs really well. I don't think I've had any uh, frame rate drops, at least not as many as there used to be. That's the one minor problem with uh, Project Brutality, is it will give you frame drops uh, from time to time. I'm really liking the weapons changes. Uh, what little we saw of uh, the uh, level changes, very cool. So overall, uh, I think uh, Brutal Doom is going to continue advancing and getting better and better. I'm still not sure if it's ever going to dethrone my, champ dethrone my champion, Project Brutality, but we will just have to wait and see. And so I'm General Lots, wishing you good uh, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Yes, that is in the pipeline. And as of this recording, I have all the gameplay footage recorded. Uh, short answer for the review, it's an absolutely amazing game. I mean, it, it really... It is a great game. I guess I might as well cover this right now before I uh, end the episode. Actually, let's see, uh, I should still have my autosave. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we'll see some more stuff in this. Well, I comment on, uh, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Okay, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus has had, it is of course really popular, people love it, and rightly so. But, as you would expect, people are coming out of the woodwork and calling it, you know, oh, it's an SJW tripe. Okay. Clearly you haven't played it, otherwise you wouldn't say something that ridiculous. Uh, it's not SJ SJW Tribe, in fact it's the exact opposite. And I'm going to devote not a lot of time, but some time to debunking that, because that really, really annoys me. Uh, it's like, don't say something's SJW unless it actually is, because that's like calling somebody a Nazi. If you don't want to, you don't just label somebody an SJW unless they actually do something SJW. You don't label a game an SJW game unless they actually do something SJW, and uh, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus does not do anything like that. Um, you know, the stuff that I've been reading of, that people have been saying about it, just none of this happens in the game. Uh, BJ doesn't become a communist. In fact, the scene where he does deal with someone who is implied to be a communist, he calls him a degenerate Bolshevik. So yeah, that, that's he's real communist now, isn't he? And the whole thing being SJW Tribe uh, is also torn down by the fact that there's a character that basically just yells at somebody for calling her a Nazi. You know, if it was SJW Tribe, they'd be... Honestly, if it was SJW Tribe, what would happen is that person would say, Stop calling me a Nazi! And then BJ would shoot her in the back of the head. That didn't happen. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, I was actually able to power through it in three days. Not because I was forcing myself to do that for the review, but because it was actually that good. Uh, the game plays better than Wolfenstein uh, New Order. The intro is way better. Like, way, way better. Because in Wolfenstein New Order, you started up on a plane, not shooting anything. In Wolfenstein 2, you start up in a wheelchair, shooting Nazis, okay? That is really cool! And of course, I'm going to cover that in a review. Uh, the story, excellent, although I feel it gets a little unfocused towards the end. J just a little. Uh, I think, I think honestly, they needed the game to be a little longer, but I think they might not have had the money to do so. Because you got to remember, these games ain't cheap to produce. And with a game as complex as uh, New Colossus was, I, they might have been running out of money. I'm glad they were able to end it when they did. But they really, really need a third game because it, it, the ending isn't bad, but it still is very open-ended, and I feel like I feel the ending got kind of rushed it, overall. If there's anything wrong with the game, it's just that it feels a little rushed towards the end. 
It's like, okay, we gotta go to this now, and then we gotta go to that, and then game over, you know? The first half is really strong, the second half is just as good, but feels a little too fast. It feels like they're jumping a little too fast. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this is where it's getting really different now. I'm glad I kept talking. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, BJ's still cool. Anya, actually, is even cooler than she was in the first game. Uh, and here's a spoiler for the first game. Uh, Anya was basically a, uh, Nazi serial killer. Uh, you actually figure that out if you collect enough, uh, diary entries. Uh, but just in case you haven't played the first game and you want to play the second game, right up. Okay, I like this. This is really cool. I mean, this is just a basic thing, but it's still neat to see. Let's see, did I get the double barrel? No, I didn't. Okay, usually there's a double barrel there in some of the wads that I play. Okay, that's cool. I like that. I like that. I was not expecting this. Now, once again, this is good if you don't want to have to fiddle around with wad files or anything like that. Because not everybody wants to do that. I can recognize that, you know. But, let's see, where was I? But yeah, Anya was the uh, Nazi serial killer from the first game. Just in case nobody... Just in case, like, you don't want to sit around going through diary entries. Yeah, I did it. But, you know, not everybody's going to be that, you know, fucking nerdy to do that. It, it... That's basically what she is. Now, in this game, she is getting out and kicking ass even more. Uh, as for the... Wow, that was... That escalated quickly. Uh, as for, uh... Performance-wise, I was able to get way better performance. All this stuff's going to be talked about in the at least. But if you were wondering, here you go. Uh, performance-wise, the game ran uh, flawlessly for me. No crashes. The desktop, I had one blue screen when I was trying to record it. But I think it was more my hardware than the game itself. But uh, I didn't really have any frame drops to speak of. Uh... It actually is a much better port than the first game. What's kind of funny is... Uh, I say the first game. Well, the first game in the new order... In the new, new trilogy. There we go. New Wolfenstein 2. 3D World. Uh, let's see, where is I? Uh, yeah, that port was good when I played it on an Asus 7770, but uh, New Order does not run at all on an RX 480. It crashes every... It, well, let me put it this way. It crashed a lot on the RX 480 and I couldn't even finish the game. Uh, I got about a quarter way through the game and it crashed so much I could not finish it. So I did not get a chance to replay New Order all the way through before New Colossus came out. However, Old Blood didn't crash but ran like shit. I wasn't getting over 30 frames per second with that thing. Uh, New Colossus, uh, 60 FPS all throughout. There was, actually there was one weird frame drop in my second playthrough uh, in one level, but other than that, it ran more or less well. Well, I say more or less, it ran pretty much well. I was very impressed by that particular PC port. Absolutely excellent. Uh, graphically, the game looked really good. Uh, the, there, was, there, were, there weren't really that many dedicated bosses in the game. Like, you mainly just fought a lot of uber soldats, but eh, that's something you gotta expect. I'm not gonna complain too much about that. The difficulty. I played it on difficulty 3. Bring him on? Shit. I played it on difficulty 3, and that was a lot harder than uh, the difficulty in the previous new ga new series games. And it was actually a lot of fun. It was closer to old school difficulty than not. Oh, I got an axe. That's a new weapon. I got me an axe. We going on an axe murdering spree. So, my wife is an axe. I do shit. Well, that, my axe murdering spree, uh, was brought to a, uh, screeching pump there. My Doom Guy's an axe murderer, starring Michael Myers as the wife. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, the 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 Wolfenstein. I don't know if Wolfenstein had multiplayer. I don't think it did. At least I can't think of it off the top of my head. I certainly didn't buy it for that. Uh, because, uh, honestly, if it didn't have multiplayer, good on them. If it does, probably no one's gonna play it. Because that's one of the problems. Like, why would you even consider adding multiplayer to a first-person shooter these days when Kabadoobie is going to crush literally any multiplayer ever? I mean, e even if Kabadoobie's not any good in terms of multiplayer, which, having not played Kabadoobie in a long-ass time, I couldn't tell you. Okay, we're just going to use the fucking machine gun. Fucking chain gun! Yes, rape him! Wait, that's terrible. Well, I guess I'm going to get a... I'm just going to get a uh, letter from Anita Sarkeesian, maybe. 
But anyway, Anita uh, Sarkeesian aside, Anita aside, uh, let's see, uh, bleh. Wolfenstein 2. Oh, one thing I would like to have seen in Wolfenstein 2, it would never happen, but it'd be cool if it, if it had, is if it had co op. You know, you used to see co op, uh, fucking Doom! Back before the internet was a thing, back when all you had was fucking land, that was co op! But let me tell you something, Doom co op is fucking fun! Okay? Fucking Quake! 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 Was co op! Okay? Come on! What happened to co op? God damn it, I miss co op! Okay, and you know what? There's a scene, and I think this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. If it is, don't listen. Uh, there's a scene where, like, it tur turns out that BJ is going to have uh, have twins. And the first thing that came through my mind, the first thing was co-op? <laughs> it's like, in the, fu in the future, you play as BJ's uh, son and daughter. I don't know if he's going to have a son and daughter, but let's assume he does. And you know what? You get to play in co-op finally! That would be awesome! I want to play a Wolfenstein game fucking co-op. I mean, even this- even New Colossus could have been co-op. You know, one player could have been BJ, one player could have been Anya. In fact, there's scenes- there's levels where you play alongside Anya. Not that her AI does anything, but if it did... I love how my phone keeps going off, but if- but if her AI was any good, you know, I mean... You could have had it co-op and it'd been a lot of fun! I mean, that's... Uh, I'm a big fan of co-op first-person shooters. I mean, it just adds something to... It adds a new dimension to the game. Uh, let's see. One other good thing about Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus... Wow, I got really hurt. Give health. Health who? Health. There we go. Give health. Uh, is the fact that it does have replayability. Uh, it really does. And when I say replayability, I don't mean, like, extra content. I actually mean the fact that I can go back and play the game multiple times. Uh, a lot of first-person shooters don't really have that. Like, you play it once, and then, like, that was a great game, and then you never play it again. When I went to get the footage for the review, which I did, like, literally the next day after I finished, uh, I was having fun. I was having just as much fun as when I played it the first time. So it's definitely a game that you would want to come back to. Uh, let's see. There's some extra content in the game other than just the base campaign. You can unlock extra little missions where you gotta assassinate Uber commanders. That's cool, but as of this recording, I still have not quite figured out the uh, system that you unlock these missions. You have to collect these things called Enigma codes, and then you have to like decode them. And it's like a really annoying mini game that I have not been able to figure out. And the game doesn't explain to you how to do it. And like you would think it would be obvious how to do it, but I still haven't figured it out. It really annoys me. And I guess I could look up a bloody walkthrough on that, but like, you would think it'd be easy, you match up the lights, but I can't figure out how to do that right. And it gives like no time to look at it. I think it's timing is really fast, so... I don't know, what you do with that is you unlock some extra content. Uh, when the game is over, you can actually go and play that extra content, which I thought was awesome. Because so many games are just game over, you're done. That's it, you know, it's finished. Like, even fucking RPGs like to do that. Like, uh, Fallout New Vegas, unless you get a mod when you finish that game, you're done. It's just over with. But thankfully, there is modding, and so that is good. Alright, let's see. Uh, Call of Duty World War II. I do not know if I'm gonna be doing that anytime soon. And we got a flashlight! Oh my god, we're in the 21st century! Did, did any of the id Software alumni ever imagine that the flashlight, the torch, of God would exist? Likely not. And I guess the best question now is, do I think Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is better than Doom 2016? Uh, I'm going to cover this in a review, and I'll explain my reasoning why, but before this video is over, I will say that yes, Wolfenstein 2, in terms of gameplay, story, and overall presentation, it is better than Doom 2016. Even though Doom 2016 is still a great game. And so, I am General Lotz, wishing you good, Doom 2016, and even better, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, or whatever makes you happy.